Hello, I am Brett from Bearded Man Studios, and today I will be talking about input requests for authoritative networked mono behaviors. So, input requests are a way for you to send input from the client to the server, and the server to properly do the logic from its end, and then have the client sync up to where the server is saying it is at. So I'm going to make a very uh, simple example of how to use it, but you're free to expand on this and go further. So I'm going to talk about the key, key input requests, and then I'll briefly talk about the mouse down, mouse up, and those type of requests as well. So to begin, I'm just going to open up my networked mono behavior, and I'm going to go to my... Uh, spawner script that I have in my demonstration scene and I'm gonna just comment this out for where I was doing the network instantiate and I'm just gonna duplicate it and now I'm gonna move on to the example network to mono behavior being instantiated the after once I have done that I'm gonna go straight into my scene and I'm gonna also verify on my networking manager that I do have the example networked mono behavior prefab attached. On my example networked mono behavior, I'm also going to check to see that server is authority. So, what this means is that the server is in control of this object, but the client can be the one that requests input for it as it shares ownership with the server. And I can enable client side prediction, but for now I don't really care about client side prediction. I just want to know that the input request is going to the server and then it replicating the the info that it has received on its end and then me syncing up as a client on my end. So after once I do that, um, I'm pretty much good to go, aside from making sure that your Forge Quick Start menu is pointing still to the to whatever scene you want to go with, but for me it's just going to be my demonstration scene. And then on my script itself, I'm just going to start with doing um, a, probably an int. So let's do private int my value equals zero. And here's another new parameter. I'll talk about this in a future tutorial, but for now I'm just going to use netsync. And netsync is a way for you to sync variables across the network. The next thing I'm going to do is protected override. Whoops. Override. And I'm going to do void network start. So that should override the network start that I have. You could also use the down here where you have the IntelliSense pop up and give you a list of what you're able to override and you can just double click it and all of a sudden those parameters if you're using Visual Studio. Then in here I'm going to say if I am the owner or rather let's uh, change that let's make it so that if I am not the owner I'm going to return and not do any logic past this and if I am the owner I'm going to do my input request down here. So I'm going to do private void input up so this is when I'm going to do a key up request, key code. And I need a frame that comes back, but you don't need to use the frame necessarily. I'm just going to have this here. I'm not actually going to do any functionality based on this, but you can if you want to. And then I'm going to have input down, same thing. And then the last one on my request, I'm going to just have my held. So my input input held down. So like if I hold down spacebar, I want to know that I'm continuously pressing spacebar and I don't need a frame for this to get back. I'm going to do void on GUI and in here I'm going to do another if is owner check return if I'm not the owner and then if I am the owner I'm going to do logic based on this. I'm just going to do a simple GUI layout my value my value and from this, I want to make sure that when I register for these events that I also remove them when it is destroyed. So I'm going to do a protected override void on destroy. Well, it's probably easier just to do the selection from here. Oops. 
and then there should be on destroy. There we go. And I'm going to make sure to remove any events that I'm hooking into up above. And then I'm going to have my protected override owner update. This is where I'm going to do my checking of input as it is sending across to the server and the server to confirm it and send it back to the client and sync its variables. That's where I'm going to do it is the owner update. So to begin, I'm going to first hook into these events. So I'm going to do input requests. And this is a built-in delegate that you can hook into that will allow you to hook into the input request when it does get a response. And I'm going to do input held. So this is when I'm holding down a key. Input down request. This is when I am uh, press a key down. Not necessarily holding it, but press it. And I'm going to do input down. Oh. I'm going to do capital D and then input up request. Input up request, same thing. I just tap it, uh, releasing a key pretty much. So input up. And there we go. I hooked in all three of my uh, events on the callbacks. I want to copy and paste this into the on destroy to make sure I remove these events when it is getting removed. There's no reason to keep hooking onto them. And then I want to do some logic when I'm holding down a key. I don't want to do any logic when I let go of a key or when I first tap a key. I, I want to do it uh, consistent logic when it goes on. So I'm going to do a switch key code. And then in here, case, um, let's do right arrow. And then copy and paste and do left arrow. All right, and then I'm just going to copy my value and just make it increment every single time that I am holding down the right arrow. And then I'm going to make it decrement whenever I hold down the left arrow. And now that it, this is all hooked up, it seems like it's good to go. The only thing left is in the owner update. I want to make sure that I am doing an input check. And I want to check for this key this uh, key code across the network. So I want to check for right arrow and left arrow. So there we go. Uh, everything is pretty much good to go. I made sure that my net example network mono behavior is a uh, server is authority on its uh, parameter for being enabled. And then I'm going to go straight to the quick forge quick start menu. Make sure that the scene is correctly set up. And then I'm just going to hit play. I'm going to hit host, and my value is zero. So if I hold down the right arrow, you'll see it go up. And if I hold down the left arrow, you'll see it decrement. And that is how you do server is authoritative input. And there is also that I'm going to talk about is the mouse, the mouse down, mouse up, and mouse held. That is the exact same. And if you want to do that, you can just do input, actually it'd be mouse. See, you have these uh, events, mouse down request, mouse request, and mouse up request. And these are the same as this. So let me copy and paste mouse request. And then this should be mouse down. Oh, it's not showing me. Let me start hooking into events. But you can... Um, make your other events if you want to hook into the mouse down mouse up and mouse held you can make the extra parameters here so if I do um, let's do let's do a function for mouse <coughs> mouse held int ID and paste that there Uh, whoops, I do not want to do that. So let's go back. I guess that is not as helpful. Using that, that's uh, re sharper for you. So mouse um, up and then mouse down, capital D. Let's move this above. And then another parameter we need we need to know the frame, int frame frame and then do the same up here 
mouse up, mouse down, request plus equals mouse down. And there you have it. And then I hook into the mouse request as well. So you have the input request, the mouse request, and if you want, you can hook into the mouse checks just by doing, instead of input check, you do mouse check, and then either zero or one, or depending on which button you're trying to check on the mouse. And that is what you would do inside your owner update. Assuming you want this to only run on the owner, you can have it run on the non-owner, you can have this run on specific um, objects and do uh, your own coding handle code handling methods that you need to do but that is pretty much it and if you have any questions at all oh right this should be mouse down there you go so if you have any questions at all feel free to leave them in the comments down below and if you have anything that you want to go or specifically want to know about the input request and authoritative uh, input, feel free to send us an email or talk to us on Slack or talk to us on our Epic Join. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching.